Folks, when we talk about the commodity markets, it's very important that you read just disclaimers. Everything that's being discussed in this segment of our discussion on commodities, any trade discussion or idea or concept should be viewed in the light of a paper trade, not an actual trade. I'm not a CTA, so I'm not licensed to give trade advice about commodities, but I'm sharing ideas on how I've looked at the commodity market over the last 20 plus years and where I've seen consistency, finding directional bias and support resistance ideas. Okay, all right, so we are in the first of the June 2017 content, ICT Mentorship. Uh, this is ICT Commodity Trading Lesson 1, Commitment of Traders, How I Use the Data. Okay, and the first thing we're going to be looking at is the raw data. Now, when we look at the Commitment of Traders report, uh, what is that? Well, the raw data comes by way of a weekly report released by the CFTC, and you can find this on www.cftc.gov. And what you want to look for is you want to be looking at the futures contract only in the short format. And if you do this under the CME, which is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, uh, we can find the currencies that trade as com dolls. And one of the com dolls are Japanese yen. And this is the most recent short format commitment of traders report for the Japanese yen. As you can see here, this is just for the Japanese yen futures contract. Now, the CFTC website gives you the opportunity to pull up the options positions as well. I'm not concerning myself with that. I never concern myself with that at all. I look at only the futures positions. And you want to be looking in the center column here where it says commercial. And when you see that commercial area, it's going to give you a little column that says long to the left and then short to the right. Directly underneath that long column, you'll see that there is 143,000. 450 contracts that's the commercial long positions and then to the right of that underneath the short column it's 76,426 contracts short the way we get the net position is we subtract the two to get the difference and if it's a positive number it's net long if it's a negative number it's net short in this case we have 67,024 contracts long that by the difference between the long positions and the short positions. So there's a, a net long position of 67,024 contracts long. Now, basically, this tells us nothing about their current hedging program. So what we have to do is have to look deeper and go behind the numbers and see what it is they've been doing. Okay, net traders position line chart. And with this chart, we can track the three main classes of traders. And again, you would find this on www.barchart.com. You've seen me use it many times in the past. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be plotting a daily chart, and you're going to be including in the indicator portion at the bottom of the chart, you're going to be adding the net trader's position line chart. And the duration you're going to be displaying is at least one year's worth of price action. And the commercial traders are typically on barchart.com shown as the red line at the bottom of the chart. The large traders are shown as in a green line and the small speculators are always shown in as a blue line. But when we look at this price action against the net traders position line chart, I want you to visually see the hedging programs by the commercial traders. Now, when I first got into trading, obviously my mentor was Larry Williams, much like everyone else uh, that's ever come across his material. Uh, he's like the godfather, if you will, of the COT data. So everything he mentioned in his 1970 book, How I Made a Million Dollars Trading Commodities Last Year, using the commercial information, that was like light years ahead of everything else. Naturally, everyone you know flocked to just looking at whether the commercials are net long or if they're net short. Much like everyone else, I found out by trial and error that it isn't that easy you got to go in there and, and do some more research uh, i thought clearly by looking at the commercials uh, if, if they were buying so therefore i had to be a buyer too but because their nature of what they are as a as a participant in the marketplace they are usually large 
corporate producers or users of commodities. And you know, commodities like a com dial is the same thing. Uh, currencies are a commodity. They're 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 bought and sold. They're provided for in terms of allowing global commerce, um, you know, providing loans, uh, making transactions all over the world. And because there's a difference of all these countries around the world, there's going to be a change from one currency to the other to do business or make transactions in another country. So. Just like we would look at, for instance, like Coco for Hershey, where they make a large um, uh, production of chocolate you know, every day, their number one you know, ingredient is sugar and cocoa. So if we follow those commodities, you know, naturally co cocoa is going to have uh, a lot of fundamental supply and demand factors that go along with it. And Hershey's going to have a trained accredited staff to track all those things that be able to you know, keep – a closer eye on whether the price is really cheap or it's expensive. And if they think it's going to be expensive in the near future, they're going to be much more aggressive about buying it because they want to lock in lower prices because they know at a later time prices will go higher. The same thing occurs with currencies. So if we look at the net traders position line chart, it gives us a graphic depiction of the overall net basis. In other words, are they above the zero line or below the zero line? By itself, it doesn't mean anything, but when we look at the information a little bit closer in a different light, you'll have a lot better understanding about what they're doing as a hedger. So that brings us to the commercial hedging. So naturally, if we pull up a barchart.com chart of the Japanese yen and you put the net trader decision line chart on the chart itself with about one year's worth of data, this is what you get. So by itself, again, it means absolutely nothing. You can see between today's present date of June 5th, 2017 and December of 2016, the commercials, the red line at the bottom of the chart, shows that red line above the zero line. That zero line delineates whether we're net long or net short. So if that red line's above the zero line from December of 2016 to present time, June 2017, that means that the commercials have been net long for over six months. So what does that mean? You buy, only just buy? It doesn't mean you just buy. There's other things you have to look at. But by itself, it means that they are in a buy program. Okay, so there's a buy program, and then there's hedging programs. The buy program is a macro perspective or macro program where they focus the bulk of their buying and while they'll hedge and sell some, they'll be hedging in prices by selling. The shorter term buy program can be seen by looking at the 12 to 6 month duration. So in other words, we look back a year to see what they've done, the highest net long position and the lowest net long position they've had and the lowest net short position and the highest net short position they've had. So we break the market down in two categories. What was their action above that zero line as a whole? What was the highest reading and the lowest reading while above the zero line? And what was the highest reading and the lowest reading below the zero line? So there's a buy program when they're above the zero line and a sell program when they're below it. But there's also hedging that goes on, commercial hedging programs that we need to be aware of and you can track them by using this information, but you have to look at it differently. You can't look at it like this because this is what retail sees. Obviously, retail isn't going to have the, the, the true perspective on what price is doing from a commercial or institutional perspective. So what I have to do is change your perspective on how we look at it. So let's take a look at it closer now. So, okay, what we're focusing on here is the bottom of the chart. These three lines here, again, they represent the green line is the large speculators, big large funds, or big private traders that have a lot of uh, position size. Small speculators with the blue line, that's usually the, uh, the public, they have no idea what's going on. And then the commodity commercials or large speculators uh, in terms of like a commercial user or producer of a commodity. In this case, if it's a bank okay, or a lending institution, uh, they would be in that red line. So the red line is really what we're going to be tracking. We're only interested in that line. We don't care what the green line is because it's always going to be diametrically opposed to the actions or positions of that of the red line. 
and the blue line we could care less about because that's the, the street money, less informed crowd. So what I've done here is I've removed, okay, by way of paint. And you can do this if you want to, but it's not necessary. Once you understand the procedure or process that you go through by looking at price, you won't need to do this. Over time, you're just, your eye will be trained to be able to look at this and be able to see it on its own. And you'll know just by looking at a standard net trader decision chart, it'll jump off at the at quick first glance. You'll see exactly what's going on without having to do all this you know, acrobatics I'm going to show you with removing the lines with paint. It's not necessary, but I'll say this before we go into it. For those individuals that really want to have this data and be able to use it like this and see it graphically, uh, you can start collecting the data and you can download historical data for all the commodities that you want to track. And for those individuals that are in here, they're only interested in the currency markets. If you like your favorite pairs, just download uh, historical data uh, about the net trader session um, for that particular currency. And for instance, say it's Japanese yen you want to be a, a specialist in. You can download years worth of data on COT data and plot the commercials net long positions and net short positions. And it would look like, like this. You could plot it with Excel or something like that. And I'm certain some of you guys that are really, uh, you know, crackerjack with uh, programming for MT4, you could probably create an indicator that does this, you know, where it plots the uh, net trader position for the commercials only. That way you can get a range and determine what the highest high and the lowest low is in the last six months and the last 12 months and be able to get that range to define that like we're going to discuss here. But without having to do all that, it's not necessary. But if you want to do it, there's things like that you can do. But what I do is I quickly look at the chart and I see it as I'm going to outline here. So obviously we have about a year's worth of data here and you can see the red line is the commercial activity and right in December, uh, right before actually December, right like the last week of November, you can see they swung from net short position below the zero basis line to net long in the last week or so of uh, November 2016. Then they've remained above the zero line from that point on to now. So again, by itself, it doesn't tell us anything. And this is the reason why people walk away from COT data. They say it's useless. Um, it's always hindsight. It can't be used in, you know, in terms of being able to have prognostication about what price is going to do. And we're going to dispel that disbelief in this teaching here. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on when the market's below the zero line. Okay, so zero line basis below zero is when the net position is bearish or short. The position above the zero line, okay, or the net zero sum basis is going to be bullish, okay, or the net long. When we have those conditions, there's going to be things that we can do to look for optimal op optimal trade entries, okay, not the optimal trade entry pattern, but for optimal trade conditions for entries. So we're going to look at this price action segment here, and I want you to follow along with me, okay, and we're going to look in this whole portion of price action a lot closer and use this information just like we see it here on this chart. We're going to change it slightly in terms of the perspective, but we, we, we're not manipulating the data at all. We're just really zooming in and looking at it from a hedging perspective because there's a hedging program that I want you to see in price action that you can track with this net sum zero line and whether the commercials are net long or net short and the activity of their net positions. Okay, so this is January 2016 all the way to January 2017 okay and what we're going to do is we're going to take this entire price action and we're going to divide it in two segments we're going to do the first portion up to january of 2017 we're going to start around um well beginning of the year 2016 i'm going to break that down but before we get into it i want you to look at what price was doing the whole first half of 2016 if you were looking at that, and obviously we had the benefit of hindsight here, but for the sake of argument, looking at institutional order flow, were the bullish order blocks being respected and were up close candles or what would be deemed as a bearish order block, were they being broken? In other words, are we seeing price being supported by discount arrays? Clearly, beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's there. So we know the institutional order flow was bullish from January 2016 or February 2016 when price made that low and all the way through until around the mid-July going into the summer months. Uh, there was a small little pullback that uh, 
broke a short-term low and then price resumed higher again and it had a lot of issues with getting above the uh, 1.00 level on the Japanese yen which we'll look at at the end of this uh, teaching why it struggled with that level and finally reversed but we can see how institutional order flow was bullish uh, every time a short-term low was taken out, price rallied. Any time a price trade down into a down-closed candle, it was supported as a bullish order block. And all of the premium PD arrays were always broken through. There was no premium effect that was lasting. But if we look at just the COT data down here, the commercials, the red line, that was below the zero line. So that would be telling us to do what? Go short based on the traditional perspective of commitment to traders. And this is why everyone discounted Larry Williams stuff for a long, long time and still do today. And if you look at how I'm going to show you how to use this information, it takes COT data to light years ahead where everyone else doesn't even see it like this. They don't even they don't interpret price like this. They don't interpret COT data like this. But this is exactly how you track what their hedging programs are. So while they had a sell program because they're below the zero line or the zero line basis was bearish because they were below zero line from January to oh, February 2016 all the way to the last or middle week of November 2016. You can see that graphically with the red line going above the zero. So while they have a bearish or sell program going on at the time for many months, they were selling heavily, okay, as the market was rallying. They were keeping sell program active, but you can still see institutional order flow being bullish. Now, this is what's going to confuse some of you, okay? We're going to cover the details later in this teaching, but for now, what you're focusing on primarily is what is the institutional order flow telling you? It's going to tell you whether there's buying or selling going on by price action alone. What we're going to do is decipher that from a COT standpoint, okay, and add that filter process, even though that the COT data is below the zero line for many months, okay, we can still ferret out when the commercials step in and do aggressive hedging and buying, even though they're in that below the zero line or a sell program, you can see when they get aggressive and buy and cause price to go higher while still keeping the COT data below the zero line. So anyone tracking the uh, Commitment of Traders report for the Japanese yen, they're not following along. You know, in other words, it doesn't look germane to them. It's completely alien. It doesn't make any sense. The Japanese yen's rallying, 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 but they're holding a net short position by the commercials. How can that be? Well, why is that happening? Well, the commercials, again, they could be banks. They could be selling uh, currency, you know, providing liquidity. All that's being reflected in these numbers as a net basis. So just because they're below the zero line doesn't mean that we can't see buying and sell as well because it can happen on, on both sides of the marketplace. But anything above the zero line, that's obviously bullish. And we would have to consider anything below the zero line bearish. But we do not limit ourselves to just focusing on selling only below the zero line or buying above the zero line because you can do both. The way you decipher it is what is institutional order flow at the time? What are the conditions right now suggesting in price action? If bullish order blocks are being uh, supporting price, any lows that are being taken out reject price as a stop run on sell stops, and then all of a sudden it rallies and breaks through what would be otherwise deemed as a premium array, then institutional order flow is, is bullish. And you can see buy programs kick in in the hedging program while a larger sell program is underway. Now again, let me rephrase that. A larger long-term sell program can still have bullish hedging buy programs in it. And you'll see that now as we go through this segment of price action for the Japanese yen. Okay, so what I have here is I have price trained in on that segment of price and I've removed the large speculators line and the small speculators line. So that way we can highlight all of the price action by way of the net traders position line chart on the commercials, which is the red line here. Now I want you to see how price stayed higher, going higher, making higher highs and, and finding support at bullish order blocks, running out short term lows and then rallying, but finding their way through any high or premium array. So the 
institutional order flow all the way through to the middle of August going into September was bullish. But how do we reconcile this net short position by the commercials? Because they're below the zero line. It doesn't make any sense unless we break it down and use the six month range and the 12 month range idea of looking for the highest and the lowest reading on their net position by the commercials. We don't care about what those long term uh, speculators that uh, you know are in the blue line. We don't care about the small specs. We don't care about the large specs. We're only caring about what the actions of this red line is because it's going to show us and reflect what their hedging program is at the current time. So anytime when you're looking at COT data, you want to look at where we're at right now and go back six months because there's your six month hedging program. They have a 12 month hedging program. So by blending the two, you can get short term quarterly effect trades. Now think what we talked about that. There's quarterly effects every three or four months. There's a, a shift in market structure and the market trades in a sustained move for about two and a half months or so, maybe three months. But every quarter or so of the year, there's a shift in market structuring. And this helps you find that by looking at the six month range of the highest high and the lowest low the commercial net position has been. That is seen with this shaded area. You can see the highest high and the lowest low is being basically blocked out with that shaded area. So once you know what that is, you divide that in half. You get that range. So we can go back 12 months and in six months intervals. But in here, you can see how the net positions have stayed in a very tight range. Even that can tell us a gold mine worth of information. Look what suddenly happens when you decipher the information like this. You do not see COT data like this, and Larry Williams doesn't even do this with COT data. This is something that I looked at price forever, and I knew there was something going on behind the scenes. And I literally said, you know what? If price can trade in trading ranges, so can this information. But if they're going to be doing buying and selling, it can't be hidden. If that's true, I should see it if I look at the data in terms of the range or time. Remember IPTA, well, I applied similar things to this. So I looked at six month intervals and 12 month intervals, three month intervals, four, four month, uh, sorry, four year intervals, three year intervals, two year intervals, one year interval, and then six month intervals. So if you go back through the data and you look at it like that, you'll get a clear depiction of what the commercials are actually doing. Now, if you look at these green little nodules in here, OK, even though that we're below the zero line, by determining the total range in the last six months and the last 12 months, we can get every time their hedging program kicks in, even though there's a larger sell program is underway by keeping the net positions below zero. Their hedging program can be deciphered by looking at these little nodules once you determine the range. The first one here, you can see how all that buying took place. The second one here, you see where they made a low there, bought off of a bullish order block that was seen in the last week of April, filling in a void. And we had this area here where they were buying again after we've taken out a short term low that was seen in the last week of June and price resumed, but then found long term resistance at that 1.00 level, which we'll look at at the last slide of this presentation. And you'll see why clearly that had a struggling point there. And we finally reversed by breaking a short term low only after trading at that 1.00 level a few times failing to get above it and finally breaking market structure to a downside. And then you can see the commercials finally started building up a larger net long position above the zero line. So their zero line basis is now bullish. So now they're in a buy program, but they're going to be hedging early. They start doing it early, but they make the highs and the lows in the markets by doing that. So now we're going to look at the last week or so of November 2016, all the way to present time. And again, I'm going to counsel you to look at what the COT data looks like by plotting a net traded position uh, line chart, as everyone else would do with, this, with the information that you would get with uh, commitment trades reports. This is what it would look like if you zoomed in on a daily chart. And again, it doesn't tell you much except for the net long. And granted, they have been sending the Japanese yen higher as a result of that. But what was institutional order flow as well? Are down candles supporting price when it trades back down to it? Are up closed candles being broken as PD arrays? Are old highs being taken out? And are we seeing support 
by price moving down into what would be otherwise a discounted rate. Yes, we're seeing that all throughout this entire price segment from the midpoint of January, I'm sorry, the midpoint of uh, December going into the January where we made that turning point. Now commercials have really moved to a net long position. Now they're in a buy program. But now because we're in a buy program, does that mean it can't sell off? No, it can have sell offs, but we're going to focus primarily on what is the range the last six months okay, of the commercial activity. But first, we got to focus on what that looks like. So we're going to take everything down to just the commercial line. And I removed the small specs line and the large speculators. I did not manipulate the price or do anything with the indicator. All I did was erase everything with paint so that way we can clearly see what's going on. I want you to look at, by taking that information, determining the, the highest high and the lowest low in the range, defining that basis line, creating its own new basis line, we can see where the buying kicks in. And you see nodules kicking in in January. We can see one in mid-March. And we can see one in the last week of May. And those are the respective time periods where the market sees the greatest in advances in price going higher. All through here, market was bullish. All through here, we're currently bullish as well. If you look at the price of Japanese yen right now and go to the left in the last week of April of this year, you can see there's a fair value gap up there at 91.50. So it kind of gives you an insight about where we think based on what we're talking about here, where a Japanese yen might go, at least on the short term. And we're using the hedging program as outlined here as a basis for that. So when we look at commercial hedging, we're not looking just at whether they're net long or net short, but that does give us the buy or sell program that they're operating in. But inside that buy and sell program, or buy and sell program, I should say it like that, there are hedging programs that go on because their nature of their speculation in the marketplace is to lock in good prices for their manufacturing of commodity or a good. And to do that efficiently, they have to make sure prices are obtained at very discount or friendly levels. You know, you don't want to be buying if you're Kershey, you don't want to be buying cocoa later on when you've already seen fundamentals are suggesting it's going to be higher six months from now or a year from now. You're not going to be doing all your buying then. You're going to allocate a lot more money now to buy up uh, stock for that. So that way, when prices go higher, you've made a better return on your investment and keeps cost low. And that's the nature of, of, of hedging. So the same thing happens with the banks and lending institutions. You know, the value of, of money is going to be fluctuating all the time. So their trained accredited staffs that do those types of things, they will invest and buy and sell based on those notions that they're supply and demand factors that they have an assessment on. I'm not smart enough to know what they are. I've never claimed to know that, and you're never going to know that from me because I, I don't know it personally. But I can see what they're doing graphically, and they can't hide it from me. And now, because I've shared it with you, you can do the same thing. There's nothing that they can – they can't hide it from you. There's, there's nothing to worry about. They're not going to be able to hide in the future because you now know how to do it. It's just the, the data, while Larry Williams back in the 70s and 60s, you know, he had it figured out then, but only at extremes. And that's what I'm going to say in, in closing here. When we look at the Commitment of Traders report and we plot on a, a trader's – uh, basis, whether it's a net long or net short on the commercials, if we get to a four-year extreme or a two-year extreme or a 12-month extreme, generally there's usually a long-term trend reversal at play, and the commercials will sometimes factor that in with their own uh, movements in the marketplace. By having those extremes, we will discount any short-term hedging program if we get to a, a four-year, two-year, or one-year extreme of the highest high and the lowest low of their net positions. But let's look at this segment here, again, a little bit closer, where the commercials were below the zero line and this section over here where they're above the zero line. When we see those conditions, okay, the red line, that's a sell program. The red shaded area, when it's like that, below the zero line, that is a sell program. Doesn't mean you can't see buying going on, but you have to look at it in the form of the, the hedging program that goes on. Look for the small short-term ranges, and when they go above the new range that you would define, as we just mentioned and outlined a moment ago, you can see where their buying and selling is taking place. Below the zero line, the best conditions are looking for shorts. That means if you can get institutional order flow bearish, you want to look for net short positions by the commercials. 
and at premium arrays, and that would be the ideal scenario. But you can still get buy hedging programs inside that long-term sell program. And again, I know this is going to uh, confuse some of you, but you're going to have to watch this video several different times because you're going to see by looking at it multiple times and listening, you'll see that there's two factors taking place here. Long-term buy and sell programs based on the zero line, whether above or below it, and then they hedge even during those periods because they're not just buying all one time and selling all one time. They're moving back and forth in the marketplace around specific price levels. When they create these nodules in the hedging program, those levels are significant in the future. They're going to be key price points as a PD array. Make sure you have that in your charts and note them by using the COT hedging program technique that I just taught you here. In the green shaded area, that is ideally going to be seeing the best buys when the market is creating discount arrays and institutional overflow is bullish. But it doesn't mean you can't be selling short when the short-term six-month or 12-month range indicates that the commercials are net short in the new adjusted range. As In other words, we looked at the last highest high and the lowest low in the last six months and 12 months. Even if they're above the zero line, while that's a bullish buy program long-term, they could still be doing short-term selling hedging programs in there, and it causes price to go lower. But you have to look at things in terms of blending three different things. You're looking at the program of buying and selling, whether they're above or below zero line. Then you look at the hedging program based on the, the range of the highest high and the lowest low of the commercials in the last six months and the last 12 months. And then using institutional order flow, what is price telling you? Is it respecting discount arrays or premium arrays? And by blending those things, you can get to the truth of what the market's actually doing, and you'll know what institutional order flow is with the greatest of confidence. So commercial hedging, hedging programs you know, if commercials are above or below the net sum zero line, both sides of the market can be traded. The current range of the commercials net position is referred to. If institutional order flow is bullish, we're going to be blending discount PD arrays and the last 12 or 6 month net long commercial readings for long trades. Now, again, that's when we see those little bullish nodules in the new defined range. Again, this can be ideally seen when we're above the zero line. If institutional order flow is bearish, we're going to be blending premium PD arrays in the 12 or 6 month range of the net short commercial readings for short trades. The best conditions are seen when both net sum basis agree with institutional order flow and PD array matrix confluences. The long-term commercial activity. The net sum zero line delineates the net buying and or net selling. Now, retail traders that know about the net trader position chart only look at whether commercials are net long for bullishness or net short for bearishness on the market. The smart money can be tracked by focusing on the 12-month and 6-month range of the commercial net position. If the commercials are above net zero line, we're going to be focusing on the 12- to 6-month net long readings. If commercials are below the zero line, we're going to be focusing on the 12 or 6 month range net short positions. We blend these conditions with PD array matrix and institutional order flow for optimal results in directional analysis. So with this teaching, what we've done is we are able to decipher what the commercial actions are, whether they're buying or selling, and not relying so much on whether they're below or above a zero line as everyone else interprets price using this information. Looking at that 100 level here, we can see how price went back to the 2014 January highs and July highs and cleared out those equal highs and fell short from that position all the way down to a level that was seen as a discount array in the January 2016 time period. This is a weekly chart, so everything that we teach in terms of PD arrays, institutional order flow, all those things get blended together to get optimal results, and now you've entered the inner circle as it relates to hedging, commercial activity, and COT. Until next time, I wish you good luck and good trading.